Welcome to Peace, everyone. I'd like to remind you that we have a new musical motion class coming for children starting on the 9th in the morning, children and their parents, preschoolers. And then the following week, we have a fitness dance group starting in the parking lot safely. And we hope that you'll consider being part of that. We also want to announce that the Faith and Film Group will be viewing the movie Harriet this coming Friday night on Zoom. So look in your bulletin, see all those things. Be aware that on Ash Wednesday, we'll have a virtual service that you can follow and don't forget the Super Bowl offering. Welcome to peace.
is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is a stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Wait, Wait for, for the, the Lord. Lord. tells us God's understanding is beyond measure and God takes pleasure in seeing us trust in the steadfast love of the Lord. So with full confidence in God's grace, let us confess our struggle to live as the faithful children of God. When we are merciless, remind us of your mercy. When we are fearful, remind us to trust in you. When we are impatient, remind us to wait for you. When we are unkind, remind us of your great kindness. When we are unforgiving, remind us of your forgiveness. Remind us of who we are in Christ so that we might become our best selves, humbly bringing glory to you, our God, by the power of the Spirit at work in us. the Sea of Galilee. So many important things happened by the sea that we had to have a piece of it here. The sea is a strange and wonderful place. When the wind blows, it creates waves that can be rough. But when the wind is calm, the sea is still and peaceful. Jesus was walking near the Sea of Galilee. And with 
with him were James and John and Peter and Andrew. Others that would come to hear him speak were women and children and even two scribes from the temple were there watching. Now along the Sea of Galilee, there was a road and this was a toll road and people had to pay a tax in order to pass. The tax collector was named Levi. When Jesus was speaking, he noticed Levi and he went over to him. Now the people watched. They said, tax collectors are sinners. And people didn't want to go and walk with a tax collector and they certainly didn't want to eat with the tax collector. But Jesus said, Levi, follow me. And Levi did. They went to Levi's house. And they prepared a meal together. And other tax collectors and sinners joined them at the meal. Now the scribes said, why would Jesus share a meal with tax collectors and sinners? And Jesus said, people who are healthy do not need a doctor. I have come to ask the sinners to repent and change their ways and to go to the kingdom of God. Now I wonder what part of this story did you like best? I wonder what part of the story was the most important. I wonder what part of this story was about you or did you feel like you were there? And I wonder what part of this story could we leave out and still have all the story that we need? Thank you for joining me today, my friends. Take care this week. When I was in college, I caught a ride with some friends who were going to Florida for spring break. 
They were headed to Daytona Beach and I was eager to see a boy who was in med school at the University of Florida. His family was living on Amelia Island, north of Jacksonville. These were the days before cell phones, mind you, when I got dropped off at a Waffle House at the Yulee exit on I-95, four hours ahead of schedule, 2 a.m. My mother loves this story, don't you, Mom? It was a long wait in the Waffle House that night with some interesting people, but I was certainly not calling my new boyfriend's parents' home phone in the middle of the night to announce my arrival. It was the first time in my life that I waited a long time for Richard, <laughs> but it was not the last. I guess he's waited for me a few times as well. Think of some times when you have waited. Some of us are waiting right now for results of tests or treatment plans. Others are waiting for college acceptance letters or news of passing grades. But the thing everyone is talking about is the wait for the vaccine. Eager waiting, anxious waiting, stuck in the pool, not sure how long I have to swim there waiting. And have you ever waited parents for a son or daughter to make it safely home while you sleep fitfully on the couch, not knowing where they are or why they are so late? That's a hard wait. I'm waiting for this second frozen shoulder to thaw out and it's hard to wait, even though I know I have to wait. It's a two year process. We're waiting for the day when masks will no longer be needed. Whew. And we can return to hugging and in-person gatherings that will not create such risk. Did you hear about the Arizona couple? who died seconds apart from one another five days after celebrating, celebrating their 50th anniversary. We are waiting for the day when we stop telling such stories. The Israelites waited too. They waited for the day when they would be rescued by King Cyrus of Persia from the Babylonians who had taken them into exile. Though there were political actors involved, it was God for whom they waited. It was God in whom they trusted. It is God whose power and wisdom are not to be questioned, although they questioned and we question. And one of the most fascinating things about the scriptures is that we see it is fine to question and to cry out to God in complaint and in lament, to remind God of what was promised. And it is also legitimate for God to respond by saying, as God did in both Job and Isaiah, just who do you think you are? Questioning me, the creator of the ends of the earth. Don't you know? that I will take care of you, says God. So both these messages are valuable and needed that we can question God, that we can cry out to God in complaint and that God can say back to us, come on, put your trust in me. As we prepare to hear this scripture from Isaiah 40, I think it's most appropriate that we sing a prayer that I sing for you, Psalm 27, which is about waiting too. Wait for the 
Isaiah 40, beginning with verse 21. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows upon them and they wither and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me or who is my equal, says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their hosts and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have you not known? Well, of course we have known. Have you not heard? Yes, we have heard. We have heard that God's providence can be trusted. Is not that what faith is? To trust in God's ability to provide whatever we truly need, even when it is not what we want or when we want it. But do we cultivate that trust? Well, we do when we rehearse that God is the everlasting God who sits above the earth, who makes earthly rulers look powerless and people like tiny grasshoppers. It is God who has the big perspective, who renews our strength, who helps us to run and not be weary, walk and not faint. But we live in the now with our very limited view of things. We say, why is this happening to us? Did we do something wrong to deserve this? Well, surely we have turned away from God each in our own ways, but that does not lead us automatically to say that God brought this upon us, especially that God brought this pandemic upon us. We believe it has happened within God's permissive will, but not God's active will. That simply means that God allows some things to happen, does not seek to control everything that happens, allows the logical consequences of our sin, but also sometimes allows even random mysterious things to happen that we do not understand, which to us seem bad. What we can say for sure is that we know God loves us, God walks with us, God wants 
the best for us and that God is not the author of evil, even though God allows evil things to happen. We can be sure that God wants and will turn to good that which is evil and that God uses suffering to draw us closer in relationship. Perhaps there is no way to be like Christ without our own redemptive suffering, building our dependency and our humility and our compassion for others. Where were you, God says, where were you when I created the world? Where were you? I think we could all admit to some things that have been good about our struggle through this pandemic. We have done some self-examination and seen how much time and energy and money we have given to frivolous things in the past. I guess this is not a good weekend for a sports interested pastor in Southwest Florida to talk about the idolatry of professional sports in our culture as Tampa Bay plays in the Super Bowl in Tampa. But it is a good time for me to remind you that you can contribute to the Super Bowl, S-O-U-P-E-R, to make a real difference, no matter who wins that silly game. You can make a real difference in the lives of hungry people by contributing to the Super Bowl at peace. Remember last year, funny enough, it was when the professional sports stopped in March that we understood we had a serious problem with COVID-19. That tells you how much stock we put in professional sports. But the pandemic has helped us with our vision. We have paid a little more attention it would be good if we paid a lot more attention, but we've paid a little more attention to systems of injustice due to race and access to health care and educational levels and the like. I think and hope we have prayed more and sacrificed more and developed more of a generosity of spirit. As I said in my newsletter article last week, we've been in a sacrificial Lenten spirit for nearly a year now. We risk our lives to some degree, to some degree taking up our cross, risking our lives every single time we commit to being together. Several of you have heard me ask, for prayers this week for our friends from near Buffalo, where a church staff is sick with COVID and the head of staff pastor, our friend Kevin, is hospitalized with it. Ash Wednesday is February 17th this year and in addition to our offering of a virtual service, during which we'll, we will invite you to impose ashes on your own head, I am inviting you to consider setting up a Zoom phone or courtyard appointment with me to discuss your own demise, your own end of life plans, your own mortality. Some of you have already made such plans. So how does dying fit with renewing strength and mounting up with wings like eagles, you might be thinking. Some of you 
on the other hand are saying, well, uh, Isaiah uh, running is not in my repertoire anymore and perhaps not even walking very fast. Maybe not walking at all for some of you. But there can be a deeper strength of soul that comes with weakness of body. And there can be a deeper faith that comes in the midst of great uncertainty in waiting, in waiting. The perspective that God invites us to share is one that recognizes that the ultimate act of God's protection is to take us safely home, bearing us on the breath of dawn, bearing us on the breath of a new dawn as we live into the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We do not have to wait until we die to hold that view of life, precious life, tenuous, precious life. This is the courageous running without weariness kind of life that knows there is more than we can see going on. There is more than we can see this is the knowing uh, God's protection, even in the midst of danger, in the midst of the valley of the shadow of death itself. As Joan Chittister says, hope is not a matter of waiting for things outside of us to get better. Hope is about getting better inside about what is going on outside. One of the many beautiful songs to sing at a memorial service is On Eagle's Wings, which is inspired by this passage. God, in silent trust we wait, knowing that you are building the fruit of the Spirit in us as we wait. Sometimes we wait patiently, other times impatiently. We wait and long for your healing of our world, for the new creation that you promise. We trust that by your goodness and providential care, we will have all that we need to face tomorrow. By the power of Christ's strength made perfect in weakness and by the presence of the Spirit interceding with, with us, for us, with sighs too deep for words, we make our prayer. Amen. Here 
watches over me each day of my life, blessing and guiding me wherever I may be. God strengthens me when I am faithful, comforts me when discouraged or sorrowful, raises me up if I fall, and brings me at last to eternal life. In trusting myself wholly to God's care, I receive the grace to be patient in adversity, thankful in the midst of blessing, courageous against injustice, and confident that no evil afflicts me, that God will not turn to my good. What difference does your faith in God's providence make when you struggle against bitterness and despair? When I suffer harm or adversity, my faith in God's providence upholds me against bitterness and despair. It reminds me when hope disappears that my heartache and pain are contained by a larger purpose and a higher power than I can presently discern. Even in grief, shame, and loss, I can still cry out to God in lament waiting on God to supply my needs and to bring me healing and comfort. <clears throat> Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest for your souls. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. To whom can we compare you, O God? You, the creator, the everlasting God. We praise you for the wonder of all living things. We acknowledge the beauty of all people created in your image. We thank you for the covenant promise you keep with your people. We are grateful that in Christ you, you re rescue us from the tyranny of sin, that you call us to serve you 
and that you give us life in the gifts of this table. We take this bread, remembering that Christ called it his body. We take this cup, remembering that Christ called it his blood. Holy God, we long for your spirit to be poured out on us. Bless this meal and all of us at our tables everywhere. May your word take flesh in us. Strengthen us for this journey. Help us to embody your gospel peace with all people, even those we do not understand. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Jesus said, this is my body, broken for you. Take and eat. Do this in remembrance of me. He said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for the forgiveness of sin. Drink of it, all of you. Do this in remembrance of me. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed are all who trust in God. Let us pray. Have you not known, Isaiah asked, have you not heard? Have you not understood from the foundation of the earth that the creator of the universe and then some greets us here? So give thanks to God for making it possible to gather, however far dispersed, to participate in the eternal mysteries and to tap into God's power and sturdy grace. As the stars move gradually through the heavens, unperturbed by the storms and stresses and wars and upheavals of this world, so too God's plan for history and for our lives relentlessly unfolds to God's glory and to the benefit of the world. So following Jesus, we commend our spirits into God's hands 
To the Lord we commit our hopes, our fears, our desires, our joys, our discontent, our everyday concerns, our long-term plans. Lord, in this world of high joys and deep sorrows, help us not to fear. Be with us in the excitement and the gladness of it all, no less than in the boredom and the pain. Awaken us to the experience that all moments are key moments and life itself is grace. Enlarge our care for one another so that we can be helpful without managing the lives around us, but rather gently supporting them and commending them to your care. So we ask God, please bless not only those we know, but also those known only to you, that they may be in your presence and know the joy of your presence as you have moved toward us in love, so lead us to be present with them in their difficulties. Comfort and relieve, O oh Lord, those who are in trouble, sorrow, poverty, sickness, and grief. Heal them in body, mind, and circumstance working in them by your grace, wonders beyond what they or we may dream or hope. We pray for our country. Enrich our common life together. Strengthen the forces of truth and goodness. Reduce the forces of deceit and anger and fear. Direct those who govern that they may rule fairly, maintain order, uphold those in need, and defend oppressed people, that this world may claim your righteous rule and know your true peace. Remember, those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Heal us, O God, to make us better healers. Mend our rifts that we will be better builders. Cleanse our hearts that we can clear out the damage of hurt and injustice. And help us to live the life worthy of the calling we have received. Humble, gentle, patient. Bearing with one another in love. Making every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. For we know that neither death nor life neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, height or depth, or anything else in all creation can separate us from the love of God that is in Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And join me now in the call to discipleship taken from the 147th Psalm. Let us work with God in gathering the outcast healing the brokenhearted, binding up wounds, and lifting up the downtrodden. Amen. Peace Presbyterian Church is a four for four congregation. That means we receive all four special offerings of the Presbyterian Church. We joyfully declare our commitment to respond to God's call to address needs we see around the world together. Through our participation in each of the four special offerings, we share God's grace and love with those who need what we can provide around the corner and around the world. The one great hour of sharing helps to improve the lives of people in challenging situations through Presbyterian disaster assistance, the Presbyterian hunger program, and self-development of people. We can receive that anytime, although our special dates for collecting are February 17th through April the 4th. The Pentecost offering 
we receive between April 5th and May 23rd, but once again, we will receive it any time. This helps to provide opportunities for young people to grow and share in their faith in Christ. The Peace and Global Witness offering enables the church to promote the peace of Christ by addressing systems of injustice wherever they occur. That's traditionally accepted uh, this year, September 5th through World Communion Sunday, which is October 3rd. The Christmas Joy Offering provides assistance to current and retired church workers and their families in their time of need and develops our future leaders as Presbyterian related schools and colleges equipping communities of color. And we receive that November 28th through December 19th. of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit bless you all now and forever. Amen.